Hello girls, I hope you're staying safe at home. Today we are going to start with the digestive system. Now why do we need a digestive system in our body? You know that the food we eat cannot be used in the body in that form. So it must be changed into a soluble, absorbable form so that it can get absorbed by the blood and easily distributed in different parts of the body. There are certain food which has sucrose in it and this sucrose is already soluble in water but again, they have to be broken down into smaller particles so that they can easily pass through the cell membranes of the wall of the gut or the intestines into the blood. Now talking about the definition, so you can write this definition or this definition, whichever you find easy. The first definition reads, digestion is the breakdown of naturally occurring foodstuffs into diffusible form. Diffusible form means form which can easily move through the walls of the intestine into the blood and carried by the blood into each and every cell of the body. Now digestion is any change which makes the food soluble and of such chemical nature that it can be absorbed readily or easily through the living membranes okay now enzymes play most important role in the digestion of foods there are hundreds of enzymes in our body but basically their characteristic is the same of course you don't have to go into detail regarding the characteristic of an enzyme but quickly you know an enzyme is a protein so it is destroyed by heating it acts only on one kind of substance called the substrate it always forms the same end products. It only affects the rate of change of chemical reaction and always speeds up the reaction. So enzymes are also known as biological catalyst. Why? Because like catalyst, it can be used again and again. It will not um, get changed in the reaction. So and it acts best at a particular pH. Okay, that is either the, you know, the surface or wherever it is used, it should either be acidic or alkaline. It acts best within a narrow range of temperature, that is a body temperature between 35 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius, which is also known as the optimum temperature. Now, moving on to the digestive system. Now, you all know what digestive system is. So, the digestive system consists of an elementary canal through which the food passes and gets digested inside and the digestive glands will helps which helps in the process of digestion. Now the elementary canal is a muscular tube which starts with the mouth and ends at the anus. It is about 9 meters long and it is highly coiled in certain areas especially in the small intestine. Its different regions, okay I'll show you the diagram, are different both in structure as well as in function. Now in addition to the digestive glands located in the lining of various regions of the digestive tube, you will see two very large digestive glands, the liver and pancreas. So if you are to name a digestive gland, you will name either liver or pancreas or both, maybe in fill in the blanks in your section one. Okay, so you will see the digestive gland that is the liver and the pancreas also associated with it and three salivary glands are found in the oral cavity that is the mouth. Okay. Now first we come to the mouth. The mouth also known as the oral cavity is the space where the food is chewed and mixed with saliva. Remember in the mouth you put in the food and you chew it and when you are chewing it you are mixing it with saliva. Okay and of course you know in the front you have the upper and the lower lips. Okay and the lips what does it do? It helps in the closing of mouth. Okay and it also helps in sucking as well as sipping of liquids. You sip from a glass or a mug, okay, and you suck through a straw. It also, of course, helps in speaking and perceiving certain sensa sensations like touch and heat, okay. If something is hot, you feel it with your lips. Now, inside the mouth, you have a muscular tongue, okay, which helps in manipulating the food while chewing and mixing it with saliva what does the tongue do it helps in like it helps in chewing that is it uh, swirls the food 
matter that is inside your mouth and it mixes it with saliva. It also pushes the food down and helps in swallowing. Taste buds are there in your tongue, tasting, okay? And cleaning of food particles from the teeth after eating. Sometimes you use your tongue to remove food particles that is stuck in your teeth, isn't it? And of course, it also helps in speaking. Now, next we move on to the teeth, okay? That is dentition. The teeth have a very special role. You know that. The main role of the teeth is to cut and break the food into smaller particles or smaller bits. The small size bits have a relatively larger surface area for the enzymes to act on for better digestion. That means supposing you have a food particle this big, okay? So now the enzymes will act around the portion all around here, mm -hmm. all around, okay? But again, if it is broken down, the same part is broken down into smaller pieces so the enzymes will have to act on the surface so as on each and every part of the entire surface entire surface isn't it so uh, it provides a larger surface area for the enzymes to act on it that is why it is very important that the food be broken down into smaller pieces that is why you have to chew your food properly so that there is better digestion okay now the teeth also helps in speaking. Please find out for yourself there. Try to speak thick, thin, through, the. Okay, you'll see how your tongue, the teeth play an important role in saying out words which has a T, T in it, thin, T, T and H especially, the. You have to push your tongue against um, your uh, teeth. Then only you can speak these words properly okay so teeth of course also adds to your facial beauty that is if you have a beautiful uh, set of teeth when you smile you look very pretty now an adult human normally has 32 teeth in all these teeth are all different in shape and they have different functions okay the four front teeth in the center of each jaw are known as incisors, okay? Their cutting edges are broad and sharp like a chisel. You can take a look at your own teeth, children, okay? And what is the function? It is used for biting and cutting, okay? And one on either side of the incisors in each jaw, upper and lower jaw, you have canines. These, these are conical and sharply pointed for holding and tearing the Food, okay next we have the premolars two on each side in each jaw next to the canines okay just next to the canines two to each upper and lower jaw what do you have you have the premolars now each premolar has two hill like projection here you can see one two hill like projections or cusps on its surface and so it is known as bicuspid bi means two cuspid comes from the word cusps or hill like projections which is going up now premolars function is it helps in grinding and crushing the lean food okay so here you can see incisors here one two three four incisors this is canine this is also canine then besides the canine you have two premolars okay and then after that beyond that i haven't told you there are three molars and then the last one is known as the wisdom tooth now next molars are the last three teeth on each side in each jaw they have a larger surface area than the premolars okay so what is their function their main function is to grind and crush the food because they have a larger surface area than the premolars the last molar of each side in each jaw is called the wisdom tooth the wisdom teeth are called because they do not appear in the beginning but they come out at an age about 17 to 20 years when the human body is um, like matured okay it is reaching maturity so human or mammalian teeth are different in shape and are called heterodont hetero 
means different, don't means teeth. That means here you, I just talked about four different types of teeth. They are not the same. Okay. Now heterodont, different types of teeth present in the mouth. And there is another type of uh, teeth that is found in some animals like lizards and frogs. They have the same type of teeth. So it is known as homodont. Homo, you know, means similar. Okay. Now, you know that mammalian teeth appear in two sets during life. In humans, the first set or milk teeth consists of 20 teeth, but not the premolars that start growing through the gums, sometimes painfully when the child is about 7 to 8 months old. You know, in the beginning, when a baby is born, they do not have any teeth in their mouth. And then slowly between 7 to 8 months old, the teeth will start coming out and it is painful. And then the complete set comes out by the time the child reaches 2 years. Okay, So these temporary teeth, also known as deciduous teeth, they fall out. You know that all of you must have lost your milk teeth, isn't it? So they fall out as their roots are being dissolved away in the jaw and are completely replaced placed by permanent teeth by about 12 years of age. Now the number of permanent teeth of mammals is usually indicated in the formula, okay, where the number of uh, incisors, canines, premolars and molars, okay, so incisors I, canines C, premolars PM and molars M is given in the same order for one half of the each jaw okay so it is known as the dental formula so the human dental formula is human child up to two years two one zero two that means two incisors one canine no premolar zero and two molars that is a total of 20 milk teeth this is upper jaw this is lower jaw and one half the other half is still there so human adolescent up to 17 to 20 years when the wisdom tooth or the wisdom for wisdom teeth has not come out. Okay, so two can uh, incisors, one canine, two premolars, and one uh, sorry, and two molars. Okay, so total 28. And human adult, when the human has 32 teeth in all, it will be two, one, two, three, upper and lower. It is the same. So next children, we are going to talk about the structure of a tooth. If you look at all different types of teeth, you will see that the general structure is the same. Each tooth consists of a crown, that is the part which is above the gum. And you have the root which is embedded inside the gum or the jaw of the, the jawbone. The root consists of a single process. Here you can see one single root. Okay or fang and this you will see in incisors and canines or of two processes or fangs there you can see how many processes are there there are two processes or fangs you will see this in premolars and lower molars and you will also see three fangs or three roots as in the case of upper molars okay now the neck this portion, the slight constriction between the crown and the root is known as the neck, okay? Now, uh, when you look at the structure of a tooth, you will see that it is made up of enamel. It is also known as ivory, which is the hardest substance in the body. It is hardest, remember, if you are asked in your one word answers, name the hardest substance in the body what will your answer be the answer will be enamel okay and below the enamel you will see the main bulk of the tooth is made up of dentine okay it is harder than the bone but not as hard as the enamel because i already told you that enamel is the hardest substance in the body and in between the dentine okay it is arranged like this there are canals, empty spaces in between the dentine, this empty space, okay? Uh, in this empty uh, canals, what will you see? You will see strands of cytoplasm of the cells in the pulp cavity. So this portion inside is the pulp cavity. Inside the pulp cavity, you'll find the pulp and the cytoplasm 
of this pulp you will see inside the canals of the dentine. Now next you will see another thing here is the cement. Okay, it is another bone like structure which covers and fixes the root in position. So like the name says cement, it helps in fixing the root in position. And finally we come to the pulp. I already told you it is a soft connective tissue and you find it in the central empty space which is known as the pulp cavity. What do you find in the pulp? You find blood capillaries, lymph vessels and nerve fibers which are continuous okay below with those of the body yeah this is the opening so from here it is continuous blood vessels okay it is connected to the body at the base of the root okay so this is the structure similar structure you have enamel dentine pulp cavity and periodontal membrane and this is the diagram of a tooth with two fangs next we move on to the salivary glands okay now saliva which is always keeps our mouth moist is secreted by three pairs of salivary glands the first is known as parotid glands you'll find this just in front of and below each ear if you touch just in front and below each ear you can feel the parotid glands okay the first pair of salivary glands which produces saliva and pours it into the mouth next one is submandibular gland lying close to the inner side of the lower jaw on each side so you find submandibular glands on the inner side of the lower jaw one on each side and next is sublingual glands below the tongue open your mouth just below the tongue you'll find the sublingual gland so these are the names of the three pairs of salivary glands which produce saliva and there are ducts from each gland which transport the secreted saliva into the mouth now small quantities of saliva keep on um, you know uh, secreting all the time so while eating, you know the salivary flow is considerably increased because the saliva must mix with the food that we are chewing in our uh, mouth and it must be made moist so that it can easily be swallowed inside. And sometimes if you have noticed, even the sight of food or smell of food or just the thought of tasty food can cause an increased flow of saliva resulting in the watering of the mouth children if you think of like you know especially the taura and all that what will happen your mouth will start watering especially these saw things when we think isn't it so every day we produce about 1000 to 1500 milliliters that is 1 liter to 1.5 liter it is enough to fill 5 to 7 empty bottles of any soft drink so where does all this saliva go maximum it goes inside your stomach now remember children, saliva is very slightly acidic, pH 6.8, 7 is neither acidic nor basic, so it is 6.8. So about 99% of the saliva is water and then you have salts, mucus and the most important thing you have to remember is it has an enzyme which is known as salivary amylase or thiolene. Children, the names of these enzymes are very, very important. Now, moving on to the functions of saliva. First is it moistens and lubricates the inner lining of the oral cavity and the surface of the tongue to facilitate speaking and swallowing. Imagine your mouth is dry. You do not have any saliva. Won't your tongue stick to the walls of your mouth, to the palate, to the walls of your cheek and you won't be able to speak. It moistens and lubricates food which again helps in swallowing. It also acts as a solvent, dissolving food particles to stimulate taste buds of the tongue. Okay, you know your tongue has taste buds so it acts as a solvent. The food particles must be dissolved so that it reaches the taste buds which is situated in different parts of your tongue. Okay, it also helps food particles to stick together. When food particles stick together to form a ball, it is known as a bolus so that they can be swallowed in a mass. That is all together, you swallow it all together as a ball which is known as a bolus. And 
the saliva has helped the food particles to stick together to form the bolus okay and I just told you it has an enzyme called thialin or salivary amylase so it helps in digestion of starch so children the digestion of the food starts right from your mouth when you start chewing your food so what does um, the enzyme thialin digest it converts starch into maltose okay so this explains why if boiled rice is chewed very well if you keep on chewing boiled rice just take a little bit of rice in your mouth and keep on chewing it you will see it will start tasting sweet why because it is turning into a sugar that is maltose so starch in the mouth with the help of which enzyme thialin salivary amylase where do you find it you find it in the saliva and starch changes into maltose which is a disaccharide that is sugar with two molecules okay and next function of uh, saliva is it cleans the mouth and it also destroys the germs to prevent tooth decay and sometimes when you have less water in the saliva you will feel dryness in the mouth and you will start feeling thirsty so what will you do you will go and drink water to re replenish the body water so saliva helps in water balance in the so this is all for today children uh, your assignment for this week is to draw the diagram of the two types of uh, teeth that is with one fang and with two fangs and write down about the structure of the tooth and submit it on the 1st of August okay that is this Saturday. Till then children stay safe. God bless you.